The Alpha Academy shows off some merch. And then it's time for the men's war games match. Randy is still not there. Cody assures his team he will make it. Trust me. But for now, they go off to war. So the men's war games match. Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, and JD McDonough, Andrew McIntyre. Versus Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso and Sami Zayn and Seth Rollins and Randy, or- Randy Orton. Uh, well, I- at the beginning, there was no Randy Orton. An empty cage. Mm-hmm. And uh, Would he make it or not? So we talked about this earlier. This was my favorite WWE War Games match. Because they did by far the best job of sticking to the formula until it was time. They had five minutes here with Finn Balor and Seth. And uh, Seth essentially whipped his ass the entire time. And then the heels had the advantage and got in there. J.D. McDonough was next in. And he brought in a couple of sticks. And they just beat Seth with sticks for three minutes until it was time for the save. They beat him. And they choked him. It was like one hope spot. And they cut him off and choked him and beat him. That's all it is. That's all I want from War Games. I don't want a thousand cool moves, especially from the heels. I want a beating. Uh, and they kept this They kept this up the whole way. Jay's the next man in. Just watching him run into the ring. Drew's in his cage, smoldering. Can't believe this guy's still alive. So Jay's running wild until it's time for the third judgment person. Exactly. He ran wild the whole time. Yes. Yes. That's very important. This is... Because I've seen a thousand War Games matches. Yes. Where even if they get the order of entry correct... It's like, you know, the baby faces. It's usually like, you know, the heels come in and they run wild, but then the baby faces cut them off. Yes, before the and next like, person comes the in. The baby faces are having a fine time and then another baby face comes in. Yes. It's like, what the fuck kind of drama is that? It's non existent right. drama. You got to beat the fuck out of this guy. So people are begging for a baby face to come in and even the odds. And they did that in every single one of these here. Every single one they did it right. And the fans went nuts for all these people hitting the ring. Except the heels, they booed all of the heels. They still went nuts. Because that's what you're supposed to fucking do. They went do. nuts in a negative way. Yes. yes. So Drew can't wait to kill uh, Jay, and it's time for the next member of their team to go in there. Uh, but the cage opens, and Drew steps forward, but Damian Priest blocks him. He says, no, we're sticking to the plan. And he gets in there, and I think it was three on two. If, yeah, it was three on two here. So even though his team has the numbers advantage, the baby aces were just running wild for three minutes. So he gets in there and finds himself staring down Jay and Seth. And they briefly swarm him and get the better of him, but then his friends recover, and the numbers game comes into play, and the team with more guys turns the tide and beats their ass. Uh, Sammy is next in. He also has to fight his way in, but he's running wild. The crowd is singing the Olay song, and Michael Cole notes El Generico must be somewhere nearby. Finally, Drew McIntyre gets his chance. He's the fourth man in for his team. And he stalks his way down to the ring. And he gets in there. And Jay is way over on the other side. All he wants to do is kill Jay Uso. There's other fuckers in his way. So he has to stop and kill Seth. Has to kill Sammy. And he kills him. Kills him, kills him, kills him. And he turns and he spots Jay. And he stalks and he takes a sweet time with this. And he gets his revenge and gives this guy the beating he's wanted to give him for so damn damn long. And he's smack talking him. All you had to do was say sorry and acknowledge what you did. Bash, bash, bash. <laughs> so there was a whole spot here where uh, Jay and Sammy managed to hit a 1D together, but they still got cut off, and Justin Day was winning when the Rhodes family entered War Games. Cody's coming out. The crowd's chanting for Dusty. It's quite awesome. They say his father created War Games. Just like Cody created a brand new event in this city as that's, well. That's also true. I went, holy shit, this is a new WWE. It's a strange what time. The fuck? It is a strange time. He finds a ball rope, but as he gets this ball rope up into the ring, who grabs the other end but Seth? And they are not necessarily chummy. And that's my other favorite thing about this match. They did not ignore the violent, brutal histories all these guys had with each other. We had references to Seth and Cody's brutal feud. The whole thing is built around Drew hating Jay and Randy hating Jay. Uh, We had uh, Seth and uh, Drew apparently had a few that I've completely forgotten about. That was talked about at length. And all these guys had to either revisit... Seth and Drew. That was a month ago. Oh, there you go. That was right, yeah. Uh, anyway, they, uh, uh, they had to either revisit these rivalries and open up old, old wounds or put the past behind them and find a way to work together. But the point is, you as a fan were rewarded for paying attention. 
And they don't often do that, but they did here. I loved it. So the uh, Cody enters. He and Seth eventually make peace. They're running wild with the ball rope together, beating everybody up. There's only one guy left for the Judgment Day. It's Dominic Mysterio. So the whole last minute of this segment, it took me a while to figure it out, but the crowd was saying, Dom, you suck. Dom, you suck. So Dom is the fifth man in. And here's the great thing. Once you have established the proper formula, you can do variations on it. So Dominic hits this cage, and everyone thinks, man, he's got the numbers advantage for the Judgment Day. They're going to beat ass again. But he gets in this cage. He locks the door. He turns around, and he sees four pissed-off baby safe faces waiting for him. <laughs> and they just slaughter him. And the place is going absolutely crazy, absolutely nuts. Eventually, it doesn't last forever. And uh, it's five on four. And uh, the Judgment Day is kicking ass. We have two men chokeslamming three. And it's cool when giants do cool stuff like that. All the small guys hit top rope moves. Seth gets razor's edge through a table. The Judgment Day is standing tall. It's time for whatever the baby faces have on tap to be the fifth person. They're chanting for Randy. They're chanting for CM Punk. There's people booing the people chanting for CM Punk. We don't know who it is. And nobody comes out. First, nobody comes out. And here comes Rhea with that briefcase. Rhea is going to cash in and beat Seth. Well, no, she's going to keep the briefcase so that <laughs> Priest can Priest. I see. destroy Seth. That makes more sense. Regardless, this never happens because voices are heard. And it turns out the Viper is here. And Randy Orton comes out and his time off has been spent entirely in the gym and eating protein. This guy was gigantic. And shredded. Yeah. This guy looked like The Rock. He looked like The Rock. He looked like Orton of 2004. Yeah, not quite, uh, you know, the current Rock, but... Uh, right. He was a goddamn big fucking dude. He was... He stood across from Drew McIntyre, mm -hmm. and I was like, this guy's bigger than Drew McIntyre, and that's a big dude. Yes. Randy was huge. Remember that promo where Vince told him he had a neck like a stack of dimes? I, I do. do. <laughs> now it's like fucking... A tree stump. Yeah, something. Couldn't think of a big enough coin. No. He's that coin that the magician pulls out at the end that's like this big. Is the comedy gig. He, he's the coin Dragon Lee has hanging up the bat cave. Yes. yes. So uh, the Judgment Day are terrified of this man. They just stand there and say, holy Christ, he's enormous. I don't want to fight him. Eventually, Dom draws the short straw. He has to go get killed, and killed he is. And uh, they kind of take turns being killed by Randy. It's Randy and Drew. I've forgotten the Randy Orton-Drew McIntyre feud. That's the one I've forgotten. But uh, Priest lays out Orton and... and we got a five-way draping DDT. Five, yeah, there, there was Michael one... Cole alerts us it was vintage war games. Sure, sure. I was like, fuck you. That's never, ever happened in war games, <laughs> ever. Yes, yes. I mean, vintage war games. So Orton is about to... Lay, uh, has. He's the only one standing. The other nine guys are all down. And he starts to pump, punch the mat like he's doing, doing RKO. And he turns to target Jay. Oh, no. Jay was right. They can't trust him. But Jay Orton does not murder Jay Uso. He lectures him. And uh, at mid-lecture, Jay dives to save Orton from Damien. And that's really the end. Parade of finishers. Starts with an RKO. Uh, there's a ring-to-ring -ring Uso splash. And then they spend, like... You mentioned Rhea Ripley spending an hour on the top rope. They spent forever getting J.D. Madonna up to the top of the cage mm -hmm. and throwing him down into an RKO. And that's what happened. And uh, Cody hit a crossroads on, Peace, on Priest, pinned him, his team won. I love this match. Well, it was very interesting that they, uh, they pinned Priest. Yeah. Because they killed that J.D. McDonough. And he got RKO'd, and, you know, that's, that's the... Uh, that is would seem to be the obvious finish, but they pinned Priest. And I think the reason that they did that is because this split is coming sooner rather than later. And mm -hmm. Priest is going to go babyface. And uh, that's another one they've been teasing for like seven months or something like that. But I think that time is, is uh, by imminent, I mean within the next several months, that's coming. Between now and WrestleMania? Watch it happen tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get the negative out of the way first. The Judgment Day comes out, and they are a cool-looking bunch of heels. They got their, they all got their their outfits, and everything looks, everything about them is cool. And this Seth Rollins comes out, and he's got two my pillows strapped to each shoulder. He's a tool. 
and his song. And MC Hammer would have looked at this outfit and said, ridiculous. He is such a dork. Why can't he? He's such a great wrestler. Why does he have to be such a dork? But uh, anyway, the match was great. I loved uh, I loved the match. It, again, it made sense. Uh, it's the way you do war games. And, uh, you know, you stick to the way it's supposed to be done. And yeah, it's probably going to be good. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.